We're generating more and more data all the time. But if there's one thing I've learned in over a decade of researching analytics and writing three books on the topic, it's that if we can't use that data to make better decisions, we're wasting it. McKinsey and Company has estimated that on average, companies with more than 1,000 employees store more information than the entire Library of Congress. And they estimate that we'll need over a million and a half more managers who understand analytics to take advantage of that wealth of information. The decisions that work well with analytics then are those that are made repeatedly, allow for some time to do the analysis, and are important enough to justify an investment. That doesn't mean you have to become an expert in math or statistics, but it does mean you need to learn three major stages of analytical thinking. The first stage is framing the problem. Framing the problem involves defining the question you want the analytics to answer and identifying the decision you'll make as a result. You can imagine that it's a pretty important step. If you frame the problem incorrectly, no amount of data or sophisticated analysis will get you to the right place. Framing the problem breaks down into two subparts. One is problem recognition, and the other is reviewing previous findings. Once you've recognized the problem you need to solve, you can probably find some aspect of the problem that's already been addressed by someone, and that usually helps you frame it better. The second stage is probably what you've been thinking is the primary one. That's solving the problem. It's the stage in which you decide what variables are going to be in your model, collect data that measures those variables, and then actually do the data analysis. Assuming you're not a quantitative analyst or a quant yourself, you may work with quants to do a lot of these activities. However, it's still very useful to know what the key activities are and generally how they're conducted. You may not solve the problem yourself, but your questions and insights will go a long way toward providing a better and more useful solution. The third and final stage is just as important as the other two, but it's often neglected. That's presenting results and taking action. If you want anything to happen as a result of steps one and two, you've got to communicate your results effectively. If a decision maker doesn't understand what analyses have been done and what the results mean, he or she won't be comfortable making a decision based on them. And in our attention challenge world, communicating analytical results in an interesting, attention-getting way is particularly important. Remember, you don't need to become a math genius to manage with analytics any more than you need to understand how an internal combustion engine works to drive a car. It's your job to set up the right parameters for your analysts and present their findings convincingly. <laughs>